it has become a bit of an annual tradition on this channel to take a look at the Subaru Outback, or any Subaru for that matter, as it seems as though none of you are getting tired of these reviews year in and year out, and I have seen no reason to stop. The Subaru nameplate is synonymous with the Northeast, much like Dunkin' Donuts is, so it only seems right that I come back every year to take a look at these vehicles. But the 2025 Subaru Outback is a bit different, and in fact, there's a lot more value at play here for this model than in the past. Now, I know a number of you are going to be asking and saying, but Mike, it looks like the same Outback as last year. Also, when you take a look at the interior, it's the same technology. So what's different? Why is this more important than last year? Or why is the 2025 model so crucial? Well, we're taking a look at the premium trim. And for 2025, there's a lot more standard equipment, but also optional packages that makes this one heck of a value in the two-row crossover market under $40,000. And that's why I am here. We're going to take a deep dive into the 2025 Subaru Outback Premium, take a look at what's offering in regards to its optional features and standard equipment, and also to see why, if you are looking at buying a two-row crossover that is practical, versatile, and capable, then maybe taking a look at the Subaru Outback might be a great decision. Now, before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout and thank you to Subaru of Wakefield in Wakefield, Massachusetts for letting me come down here to check out the Subaru Outback once again. Their link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Subaru inventory. So as always, let's begin with pricing. The model we have today is the premium coming in at just over $31,000. But more importantly for the premium trim, you have two optional packages to choose from. Optional package 13 and optional package 15. Both completely change the value proposition of this vehicle in more ways than one. When you're comparing both packages, it might come down to one feature over the other that make you choose going with a more expensive alternative rather than just going for option pack 13. So with both packages, you get blind spot detection and rear cross traffic alert along with lane change assist. Also keyless access and push button start, hands-free power lift gate, a power moonroof, and for optional package 15, you do get a navigation system. Now, what is interesting about the 2025 model year is that with the premium, you get onboard navigation as an optional feature. But just above the premium is the Onyx, and the Onyx doesn't come with onboard navigation. Is that a make or break deal? Probably not, but I just think that's really interesting for this particular trend that we have here today. Now, in regards to the exterior design of the Outback, nothing's changed at all. So same cladding, same features such as the super symmetrical all-wheel drive, which does come standard across all trims for 2025. You have LED fog lights as well, and you will have for the premium gloss black side mirror caps. And with our model being equipped with optional package 15, those side mirrors will have blind spot detection and rear cross traffic alert. They're also heated, power adjustable, and they can be folding. Then as you make your way around to the back, once again, nothing different at all. Same bumpers, same taillights, which are not LED, and also the turn signals aren't LED either, but it's the same old Outback that you all know and love. In regards to tire size, you have 17-inch alloy wheels with the premium, which I have to say is a great pairing for this vehicle. They are wrapped in Yokohama all-season tires, and with the suspension as soft as it is, it's one of the most comfortable crossovers you can buy in this market. And I think that is what makes it a great family-friendly option and alternative. Then beneath the hood, you are going to have a 2.5 liter boxer four-cylinder engine, producing 182 horsepower and 178 pound-feet of torque. As always, it is paired with a CVT. Better yet, super symmetrical all-wheel drive does come standard. And as with all Subarus, you do get 8.7 inches of ground clearance for year-round versatility and capability. Now, with the 2.5, I know some people will say, oh, you got to go with the 2.4, you got to go with the XT. I don't actually believe that with this model. I think with the 2.5, you'll be more than happy with this power output, and also it is pretty responsive for what it is. Then in regards to fuel efficiency, you're looking at right around 26 miles per gallon in the city and 32 miles per gallon on the highway, which really isn't bad for a naturally aspirated engine such as this. Stepping inside the premium, you are greeted by a very impressive cabin that for a lower trim for 2025, you do feel as though you're receiving quite a lot for the price. Now, of course, we do have some optional packages equipped on our model today that does change things up, especially with the push button start and keyless entry. That alone sets the tone for what this vehicle is all about with optional package 13 or 15. But with the seats, with them being cloth upholstery, 
it can be hit or miss. Sometimes they're too firm, they're too stiff, they're not comfortable. They actually provide a decent amount of bolstering and support. Better yet, they are heated, three-level heated, by the way. The driver's side is power adjustable with lumbar support, whereas the passenger will have to manually find their ideal seating position. Now, for the rest of the interior, nothing is too different here at all. However, there are some embedded features that I do like on the premium trim. So as always, you will have your analog gauges with a small information display in the center. Now, of course, you can scroll through this information display, go through different statistics, such as your fuel efficiency, your tire pressure monitoring system, also, of course, outside temperature. But when you do offer optional package 15, you also get traffic sign recognition. That is typically reserved for higher trims in rivals and competitors. I love to see that, especially if this vehicle is gonna be your family hauler, or maybe you're giving the keys to the young driver and the family in this vehicle. Maybe they'll follow the traffic laws and the speed limit, but that goes hand in hand with the EyeSight driver assist technology that does come equipped on the Subaru Outback Premium. You're also gonna have adaptive cruise control and lane centering, as always, for a vehicle in the Subaru lineup. You're gonna find the buttons on the left side of the steering wheel that control your information display. Also, of course, you can scroll through different radio stations and then the source, such as AM, FM, and Sirius XM, if you have that equipped on your model. Then taking a quick glance over to the infotainment system, you will have an 11.6 inch touchscreen with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. And since we do have optional package 15, we have onboard navigation as well. Optional is a wireless phone charging pad going hand in hand with the wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You're also going to find USB and USB-C input along with an auxiliary outlet. Then you will have dual zone climb control for the premium, another great feature to have. And we're seeing that become standard across a lot of trims in the Subaru lineup. You have physical buttons and dials to the front and rear defrosters and volume and tuning. One feature that has been added on to the Subaru Outback very recently is valet mode. So just put in a pin code and that way when you are going to a restaurant or a hotel, the valet won't be speeding off in your Outback. Now, some of you might be saying, oh, I wish they didn't have a tablet touchscreen in the Outback, but I do think it becomes second nature to use. I find it to be very easy and simple being a Subaru owner myself with a Subaru WRX. Now on this screen, you are gonna find some icons that you can activate the auto start stop system, auto vehicle hold, also of course setting up your wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility, but also you have your vehicle control system. So you can turn off your vehicle dynamics control, which that's basically traction control. You can activate X mode, you can go through your steering responsive headlights, you can turn that on or off. I don't know why you'd wanna do that. Then of course you can turn off auto start stop. Then for your driver assistance features, you have your pre-collision braking. You can turn that off or on. I would leave that on along with lane departure warning and rear vehicle detection, which is your blind spot detection and rear cross traffic alert. Not all premiums have this equipped that will be part of optional packages. And then wrapping up this infotainment system, you will have a rear backup camera with trajectory as always, since that is mandated and standard. For the rest of the interior, next to your wireless phone charging pad will be an electronic parking brake. You can have your standard gear shifter here with gloss black trim two cup holders. Then for the standard storage compartment, there's plenty of room for smaller items, such as a couple of smartphones or gadgets. And above, since we do have optional package 15 equipped, we do have a power moonroof bringing in some natural light to the interior. Then for passengers in the back, nothing different at all in regards to interior dimensions for legroom, shoulder room, or headroom. It's still very family friendly. And also better yet, with the cloth upholstery, it is pretty grippy. So I don't think you'll be swaying around back here on a winding back road. But also I think everyone, whether they're average size adults or smaller kids, should be comfortable in the second row. Back here, you will have two rear air vents to go along with the USB-C and USB input. And rounding out the second row seating area, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Then making your way around to the back, optional is a power lift gate, which I think is a must have feature if you're constantly unloading and loading your Outback. Behind the second row seats, you are going to receive 32 and a half cubic feet of room, identical to last year. So the same goes for when those second row seats are folded. On both sides of the rear cargo area, you will have some cubbies for some smaller items, such as a couple water bottles, car detail equipment, or maybe even a first aid kit. What you're also gonna find too is your quick release latches that will conveniently lower the second row seats once you pull on them, so that way you're not manually lowering those seats when you are loading your vehicle up with some heavy equipment. Then beneath the floor mat, you are going to find a spare tire, so if you encounter a flat on your road trips or travels, 
you can fix that and be back on the road. And now that we've gone over everything, let's take the Outback out for a quick test drive to see how it performs. The Subaru Outback is one of my perennial all-stars in the two-row crossover market, mostly because of its great value, but also the fact that you do get the ground clearance of 8.7 inches and Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive. It's one of the most capable daily drivers out there that you can buy under $40,000, while also being practical and very family-friendly. While a lot of people will point out the fact that you get the 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine and, of course, the CVT, it's not going to be the most compelling dynamic or athletic. However, what makes the Subaru Outback, I think a great value, but also why so many people love these vehicles is because it's competent and capable. With its competency, it's very smooth. This is one of the smoothest crossovers you can drive with a CVT. And also with its capability, you have that off-road clearance. You have a vehicle that you can go through deep snow and mud that you're not gonna find with a CRV or Toyota RAV4. And the fact that you get all of that on a lower trim and at around $36,000 is why so many people choose this particular model year in and year out. In fact, the premium does sell at a higher volume and Subaru does make a lot more of these than any other trim, and it's really for a good reason. But I think a lot of us can get caught up in the fact that oh, we had to spend a lot more to get the 2.4 with the turbo, with the more horsepower, and just have that engaging driving experience. But what makes the Outback so enjoyable is that it's not one-dimensional. It's not a vehicle that is just solely for commuting. You can do other things with this vehicle as well, such as going on those adventures and maybe going camping or skiing and snowboarding during the winter with no problem. But what I really appreciate about the Outback for 2025 is the fact that it is so well equipped. That for a vehicle under $40,000, you are receiving a lot of the bells and whistles that you would find in more expensive alternatives, such as the 11.6 inch touchscreen that I know some people do complain about, but the fact you get the onboard navigation, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility, a wireless phone charging pad. I mean, you're receiving quite a bit here that you didn't get in the past for the Outback. And I think that's why this has become a go-to option for a lot of Americans, especially if you do live in colder regions of the U.S. By having a CVT that doesn't have this rubber band effect or has any type of droning, is going to really maximize your enjoyment behind the wheel. And pairing that with a soft suspension, this is a suitable crossover for someone who does have a family or does travel quite a bit for a weekday job or weekday commute. And while in the past I would say that the Outback and Forester, especially with the 2.5, isn't really that remarkable, isn't something that you're going to be writing home about. When you start looking at the value and as time has progressed, looking at what the automotive industry is experiencing with the higher prices, but also just what you're getting now from the packages that you can receive with the Outback, the value is unrivaled and unparalleled. While some may say that in regards to technology, you might find better with a full digital gauge cluster in a rival or a traditional automatic, keep in mind that a lot of two-row crossovers under $40,000 are not going to exhibit dynamic handling or very quick straight line speed. You're pretty much getting the same attributes across the board. It just comes down to what you're actually looking for. Do you need that super symmetrical all-wheel drive coming standard? Do you want to have the creature comforts that you're not going to be complaining about, oh, I should have spent a little extra on, say, you know, a vehicle around thirty-eight dollars or $40,000? Because even with these cloth seats, they provide a lot of support and bolstering, and better yet, they're heated. You also get dual zone climate control. So you're getting a well-equipped model that I think at the end of the day, you, you walk out of the showroom and you think, you know what, I actually got a really good vehicle here. And even though I think some people might say you got to go with the 2.4, I'm somebody who's actually pretty complacent with the 2.5. It, it puts down the power pretty well. Sure, it's not going to be, you know, a vehicle that can do zero to 60 in five seconds, but it's not going to be a slow or lethargic experience, which is why I think that if you are in the market for a two-row crossover, it doesn't feel like a stereotypical 
two row crossover like a Forester can feel like with the higher roof line, but also it does have more of this traditional SUV feel. Whereas the Outback kind of feels somewhat car like and lift the station wagon like you're going to probably choose this at the end of the day. Personally, I've always liked the Outback more than the Forester just because I think it gives you a lot more in regards to the driving experience and driving dynamics, not necessarily in regards to the handling or the straight line speed, but rather the seat positioning, the fact that it doesn't feel like a crossover and you still benefit with that 8.7 inch of ground clearance is why I think the Outback is a solid choice. Also, there's not a lot of vehicles that look like a station wagon in this market. So if you do want a vehicle that gives you that capability, gives you the interior space and overall practicality, while also still feeling like a car at the end of the day, I'd say choose the Outback. So in closing, after spending a few hours with the Subaru Outback Premium, I've learned here that this trim is the go-to, much like the Subaru Forester Premium is for the 2025 model. Subaru's going out of their way to give you a lot of value at an affordable price point. Now, even though some people might not go all the way with optional package 15 and instead go with an Onyx or a Limited, I say that what you're getting here for a lower tier trim, not only in regards to safety, but also capability with a ground clearance and super symmetrical all wheel drive, you're receiving a vehicle that can pretty much do it all in regards to being a great daily driver, semi hauler, but also a capable crossover in 2024. But more importantly though, you don't feel as though that you're receiving a cheap vehicle in any way, shape or form. Well, some of you are going to say, but you're missing out on the 2.4 and the turbo and you're not getting some creature comforts that you're going to find in the limited and touring. I'd say for a vehicle under $40,000, there's not much more you could ask for or desire or actually demand. And what we have here with the Subaru Outback Premium, I think is quite a lot to work with. And I think it makes it a very formidable option in the two-row crossover market. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys next time.